Now that's a lot of fireworks. Hey guys, this is Jesse Vaverka, the director and producer of the Passfire Fireworks documentary, which shows the fireworks culture in over 20 countries across the world. Today I'm down in Pittsburgh, Kansas at Jake's Fireworks World Headquarters, where the warehouse is absolutely packed with great fireworks for the upcoming season. And this little favorite of mine, The Fireworker, inspired by the Pass Fire documentary. Stay tuned because it's coming up. It's got the theme of the five things it takes to be a fireworker or someone who shoots fireworks. You need the heart of the poet. You need the eye of the painter. You need the hand of the sculptor. You need the talent of the artist. And of course, I think the most important, the courage of the warrior. Now, a lot of consumer cakes, they don't have something called a croissette, and this one does. And it's got it in two colors, red and green, two of my favorite colors. It's also got some gold glitter in there. Now, if you're wondering what a croissette is, it's the firework effect that shoots up in the sky, but then it splits into four pieces, like a cross. That's why it's called a croissette. And you really don't find them very often in consumer fireworks, so it makes this cake pretty special. There's another thing that makes this cake special, and that's that even after you're done shooting it, the fun's not over. You see this thing right here? That's a QR code. What you can do is you can scan this with your phone or you can type in the link below and it will take you to a splash page where you can get your own free HD download. The Fireworker from Jake's. Check it out if you haven't. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and watch Passfire. You're going to learn a lot of great stuff about fireworks all around the world. I'd like to give a shout out to Jake's. Enjoy. Preparations are underway for our annual 4th of July party. We have a good time. We'll do a pretty massive barbecue. And we got this barrier here that we set up. Obviously, we want to keep our guests safe. My name is Joe Gober, and I'm the owner of Americana Vineyards and Winery. We celebrate the 4th of July with a huge party, lots of food, lots of wine, lots of beer, lots of friends and family. It's a very, very family-oriented holiday, and the families get together, and there's barbecue and all the other things. They're going to have bands all day today, barbecue, wine tasting. So we actually are going to have some lance work that look like wine bottles. One of them is going to pop its cork and actually spill wine out the end of it. The 
Fourth of July is so special. Growing up as a kid, we always celebrated it. And I started with sparklers and firecrackers and worked on to bigger and better things. And it's just amazing. It's a magical state. So when you experience that on the 4th of July, it makes you feel really good. And then fireworks are a part of that, so fireworks make you feel really good. There's no feeling like that when you get out there and you start your show and you like that first firework. You know, the excitement, the adrenaline, just the pure fun that you're getting to have. You're part of the show. Everyone here feels every boom. They, they sense the heat, they see the color. When we light up fireworks for July 4th, we are celebrating really what our country is about. Fireworks are so spectacular, they're part of our American heritage. We will do rockets red glare to bombs bursting in air, and our flag was still there all the way to the end uh, with a 21-gun salute, and then that'll lead us into tonight's show. very thrilling, it's very immediate. Um, in some ways, it's a total waste of money. I mean, you watch your money go literally up in smoke. The intimate experience of doing it with your friends close in is, uh, is hard to beat as well. And people talk about it, they remember it, puts a smile on their face, and they come back next year for more. Nothing better than driving home on the night of the 4th of July. I'm just hearing all those bangs and cracks and seeing breaks up in the air. Fireworks really transcend all cultures. They transcend language. It is a form of art. We have to be able to have some fun, and I think fireworks are a great way to give people that fun and that enjoyment. Thank you guys for coming out. I love doing this. I've always loved them since I was a little kid. I remember going to our local carnival and the firemen would be setting off the fireworks and I was more interested in what was going on on the ground more than what was going on in the sky. Three, two, one. That's burning out. Oh, there you Not go. bad. Not yourself. bad at all. My name is Tom Dimmick. I'm involved with fireworks both as an amateur and as a professional. And so I was exposed at an early age to aerial shells, wheels, Niagara Falls, line rockets, the whole nine yards. You know, it never occurred to me that I might end up being one of the people down there making it happen. Nice heading. I think it crossfired again now. Part of the problem is that where I was mounting them, the pass fire hole was right at the level of the rim where everything else is right. happening. Yeah. What I found was wrong was the pass fires. I have a, a pass fire that comes out of the other end of that driver and comes across to light the next one. And so for a short while, there's this burst of flame coming out of the side, and that's what was lighting things that weren't supposed to be lit, causing the crossfires. So with luck, those changes will be the magic we needed, and we'll see it the way it's supposed to be tonight. That was nice. A pass fire is a part of a firework shell. So it'll be lit from up here. The fire will come down, it'll get out here and light the time fuse. And then it will also pass that fire around to the bottom where the lift charge will be to push it out of the mortar. That's what a pass fire is.
history of fireworks is actually quite long and does have very definite national characteristics. All over the world, they have different segments of traditions. The original fireworks were developed in China. Black powder, which is the basis of pretty much all of our fireworks, came back into Europe with Marco Polo along the Silk Route, and England developed a very substantial fireworks culture. In the UK, we've, we've always had the Guy Fawkes, the Bonfire Night celebration. You know, it goes back a long way. So in the UK now, we celebrate around November the 5th, and it's just really that getting the family together. I think for the children, it's the excitement. And for, I think for the, the adults, for the dads, it's normally that little bit of danger element involved. And I think we're all big kids. We've got the green man in. It's opposite Guy Fawkes' house. The saying goes that you protect yourself by covering your face with green leaves when you're working with fireworks. So to stay green means to stay safe. The fireworks are probably linked with the gunpowder that was put underneath the Houses of Parliament. Tradition is you'd create the Guy Fawkes, so like a homemade version of the gentleman who tried to blow up Parliament. You'd put that onto the bonfire, you'd light it and watch the effigy burn. It's a celebration of either his attempt or his failure to so set fire to the House of Parliament. When we see the colours, we hear the noise, the excitement that generates, I think it's just taking us back. You've got something that creates real enchantments, real uh, magic almost. Stephen Hawkins is, is one of our, our customers and uh, probably our most favourite customer. He does genuinely love them. You know, he always has loved them. He used to make his own when he was young. I think it's just it's just one of those fascinations that kicks in when you're young, you know, and it, and it always stays with you. If you walked out of your front door in East Hoathly or any village in fancy dress, the local people wouldn't bat an eyelid. They would think it was absolutely natural. It's a cultural thing for Sussex. There is something there, you know, uh, all around the world, you know, men, women, children, they, they go forward. Santa Barbara is a saint, a traditional in Spain, to protect the fireworks industry, to be lucky and to protect us for any accident and to help us. Everything related to fireworks started with a religious thing. So the fireworks was a way to honor the saints. So this is a model of a mascleta and everything is connected. All the mascleta going this way, this way. The sound level gets higher with the rhythm. We got the rockets and then all these being salutes, fire at the same time and making the finale of the mascleta. My name is Maria Lora Zamorano. I am manager uh, from Caballero FX. It's a spectacular mascleta. I think uh, I am crazy because I like very much fireworks. <laughs> A lot of the culture is about fire. We like a lot of noise non-stop. It's like 4th of July in the uh, United States, but uh, every day. Here in that structure, we put the, that one, and it represents a bull, because the bull is 
one of the most important pieces of the Spanish parties. to pick 2014 fireworks the way God intended them to be let the party begin we're all here to celebrate the patron saint of fireworks in Toltepec San Juan de Dios and I have to believe the saint is smiling San Juan de Dios ha sido adoptado como el patrono de los pirotécnicos I think I've been to Toltepec 23 times, and it's the fireworks, but it's also the people. It, it becomes less and less about the fireworks and more and more about the people as the years go by. But it's still the fireworks. Everything that you're seeing here is made in Mexico, and more specifically in Toltepec. These things are awesome, I and mean, this thing's made of wood. They're going to climb up that thing. It's got, like, barn rope holding it together. The Mexican people are very in tune with their own culture and their own traditions, while at the same time bringing in some outside influence. Those are two Cobra modules right there, 18 cues apiece. Cobra modules hooked up. I'm, I'm Scott from Cobra. Okay. Yeah, how you doing? I'm Grant. How you doing? Yeah. Hey, Phil, and you're the other. OK, and nice Phil. Okay, I'm Scott from Cobra. <laughs> Mucho gusto. Bought a bunch of oh, JM! One of the things that we try to do is build the user interfaces so that it doesn't matter what language that you speak. You can pick it up, you can turn it on, and you can say, oh yeah, press this button to arm it, and then I start pushing these buttons and I fire it. Mi nombre es María Elibet Martínez Juárez. Yo soy la cuarta generación en pirotecnia con mi familia y me gusta mucho lo que labor. Los colores, las figuras, los mecanismos en cuestión de castillo. Es peligroso y también para esto hay que tener cuidado, paciencia y respeto a la pirotecnia, a la pólvora. Tenemos el privilegio de equivocarnos solo una vez, porque si nos equivocamos, pues acaba nuestra vida, acaba en ocasiones vidas ajenas a de nosotros. De la hora de quemarlos, me, me siento nerviosa, pero a la hora de que están en acción, están este, prendidos y todo eso, pues se siente un, una alegría, una alegría de que tu trabajo está este, siendo apreciado. La cuenta corre desde que quema uno el toro, al siguiente día ya está pensando uno, el otro año va a ser mejor, ¿no? O, o este, vamos a hacer cosas mejores, ¿no? Están muriendo la piña colada. Ah, no, lleva jugos de piña, lleva vinos. 
Es cuando ya estamos en el, rec en el recorrido y ya todos empiezan a pedir así de ya, dame. <risa> Te quiero agradecer por mantener a mi familia unida, a mis amigos, por todos los que trabajamos la pirotecnia en Tultepec, eh, aquí en México y en otros lugares. Eh, es patrono de los pirotécnicos San Juan de Dios. Un orgullo para nosotros hacer este recorrido y darte estas ofrendas de todos los pirotécnicos. Y pues solamente te quiero dar las gracias una vez más por estos 16 años de, de tradición. Gracias, San Juan de Dios. I think they have about 310 bulls that they're going to bring in tonight, so they'll move them through here with some speed. If you happen to get a burn, that's considered to be blessed by the saint. I had a leather jacket one time that had a double lapel on it. I was carrying one of the bowls, and one of the Fusca PAs skipped off the ground, bounced up, and lodged in my lapel, and it's sitting here spraying, and I can't move it because I've got a hold of the bowl and I'm trying to shake it off, and it burned like half my mustache off in the hole in my jacket. opening of the Philippine International Pyro Musical Competition held annually here at Pasay City, Philippines. Going to shoot will be Japan, Tamaya Kitahara Fireworks. Next team will be Pyroman from Finland. <laughs> okay, after the show, let's drink together. Let's have a absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Fireworks has been a hobby for me a very long time. I was very, very young when I uh, started. I remember when I was uh, small, whenever uh, there is a celebration, I stand on the edge of the window, looking uh, in the sky and wondering what's that explosion like a supernova. It amazed me and I hope and I wish that uh, someday I will be working with that kind of stuff. It's a childhood dream. Birthday present for Robert and let's see what happens. This should be look like a purple palm's tail. I'm celebrating my birthday on the barge with all my crew and the participants. It's your birthday. It's birthday cake. I saw that Mexico does have a Saint Patron for fireworks. Uh, I, I saw the name was uh, San Juan de Dios. I realized that I was born in this hospital named San Juan de Dios, right here also in Pasay City. Maybe I was really destined to become a fire technician. <laughs>
My name is Nick Mitri. I run a company called Fireworks for Africa, and we're based in Johannesburg, South Africa. I've been doing fireworks for about 20 years now. I could not imagine not doing fireworks. I've often been on the road at like three in the morning after de-rigging and dirty and sunburned, thinking, geez, maybe I can get an office job, work nine to five. And then, you know, there's nothing that even remotely appeals to me. I think once pyro is in your blood, black powder oozes into your veins, it, it can't come out. <laughs> Madiba is our name for Nelson Mandela. This is a flame, Madiba lit. And this flame is meant to burn forever. It symbolizes our democracy. Myself and Lee drove down to Nelson Mandela's home, and Nelson Mandela was sitting a couple of feet away from us. We literally transported that flame from Madiba's hand to here. And to think I've been around the world, thanks to fireworks, and then the cherry on top of it all was to go down to our hero's house, meet him, light this flame, and for him to talk to us yeah, this is where fireworks brought me. I've traveled to like 40 countries and I've met all kinds of people all over the world. And if it wasn't for fireworks, I wouldn't have been able to do that. FFA logo and fireworks in a bunch of different languages. Well, five boxes, yeah, so six boxes. It's a show we've been doing for about 12 or maybe even 15 years now. It's in Labumbashi in Democratic Republic of Congo. And what they decided this year is to make it a true pyro-musical show. So we've designed it to music. We use Galaxis as a firing system, so the whole show is going to run automatically. So the pressure's on Zane and Dom and Jimmy to go up and get the show done. This particular La Bombashi show is a horse riding event that we've been doing for a long time. And it's quite a prestigious event and the horses are about 100 meters from where we fire from. If fireworks are so bad for the horses, the horse owners themselves wouldn't hire us. You know, when it comes to positioning everything, it does take time. But, I mean, by the looks of it, I think uh, everything will be okay, I think. So basically everything is pretty much squibbed and um, ready to be dropped and placed into the, the mortars. All the candles are on their racks. They're good to go, all placed in the angles, so to just brace them with some wood and place them out in their positions. Today I'm feeling good because we did most of the job. So Galaxy is here, all the powder is here, all the racks are in place. Definitely the highlight of fireworks is actually that time when it comes to pushing that button, especially when it's me behind the button. I mean, I'm, I love it. We must do a boom show. I like artistic stuff, like I took art at school and you know, if I wasn't designing shows I'd probably be doing paintings. It's like art, you like designing something but it's in your head and eventually it's going to be in the sky. this is mala padakkam the traditional kerala firecrackers curry Fireworks is a custom. In Vishnu temples, you don't find fireworks for the festivals. It's Lord Shiva as well as Lord Dharma Shastra, they like fireworks. That is the belief in Kerala. I'm going to go to the 
അവള് വേണ്ടനുസരിച്ച് ഇപ്പോൾ ഇപ്പം നൂറ്റൊന്ന് ഇപ്പോൾ മൂന്നാല് മൂന്നാല് നൂറ്റൊന്ന് ഡേറ്റിലുണ്ടാവും ചാർജ് ഇപ്പോൾ പത്ത് രൂപ പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട വെടിപാട് വെടി വഴിപാടാണ് ആ വെടി വഴിപാട് നടത്താൻ പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട കാരണം ശ്രീരാമൻ്റെ സീതാദേവി ഭാര്യ സീതാദേവിയെ രാവണൻ ദേവതാക്കളെ പറഞ്ഞ അയച്ചു കൊണ്ടുപോയി ശ്രീരാമൻ്റെ ഏറ്റവും ഭക്തനായിട്ടുള്ള ഹനുമാൻ ഹനുമാനെ പറഞ്ഞയച്ചു അന്വേഷിച്ചൻ ഹനുമാൻ ലങ്ക ചാടി അവിടെ ചെന്നു ചെന്ന് കഴിഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ ദേവനെ ഏറ്റവും ഇഷ്ടപ്പെട്ട കാര്യം വെടിയേട്ടപ്പോൾ കണ്ടു കണ്ടു ഇതാ കണ്ടു മുഴക്കം ഇത് കേൾക്ക് ഭഗവാൻ ഏറ്റവും ഇഷ്ടപ്പെട്ട വഴിപാടുകൾ അതാണ് ഇവിടെ ഏറ്റവും പ്രധാനമായിട്ടുള്ള വഴിപാട് വലിയ വഴിപാട് അത് വിട്ട് പിന്നെ മീനോട്ട് മത്സ്യങ്ങൾ ദേശാവതാരം say that the world happened to exist with a big bang the big bang theory that is actually is a god's grace we return to god our thanks in the form of a sound kada kada mold kootu kooti virinu much more colorful for kids and all the uh, ladies not much of this uh, this kind of big things ivarana iran ayil parnakav therambadilum pooram endha pariya neendrikana oru vyakti endu parayil adivan ibadu thiri mooliki odathundavu sna podi idunna mooliki pokki kaanikunnu bigger the sound the more the echoes because of fireworks that their, their um, glass has broken okay so every now everywhere everywhere is stickering this in uh, stickering this it's a round shape hole and they put up that maroon inside the hole they don't use any fuse firing that maroon they used to line up gunpowder you have to be careful about it if you take a finished product from one place to another you have to do it as if you carry an idol of the lord then there will be no accident it was in the year of 1990 it's a traditional temple festival suddenly the fireworks blasted and even the people just uh, started uh, near to me they all fell down and lot of accident happened nearly 30 people died in that accident the government tried to put a lot of uh, rules on fireworks but due to the passion uh, of the festival people started to fireworks again it's a we are a minority in Kenya my name is Jayshri Suchak and i am a co-director of a company called Tononoka Fireworks we operate in Kenya we actually use the very small tubes to to fill the powder and make elephant uh, repellent bombs this is the finished product it's been plugged powder put in time fuse is very important for that one 
because you want the farmers to throw them at the correct time, not burst in their hands. The business itself is very family oriented. We have my two daughters, and they're both apprentice pyrotechnicians. I'm Sonam Suchak. I'm a director at Jay's Pyrotechnics. Apparently, it's supposed to be a very male-dominated business. So when they see a lady, the first assumption is, oh, she's going to mess up. Yeah, because most people look at me and think, it's a woman. Is she going to be OK? And when you come out shiny, they have no words. That's inspiring in itself for me. So it pushes me harder to do more challenges. There's that whoosh and the thud. Wow, that smoke, that smell. It's intoxicating, to be very honest and truthful. Everyone loves fireworks. It's not restricted to a community or a caste. Sometimes you have to understand the situation in very hunger-struck areas where genuinely there's no money. However, everyone has an entitlement to entertainment, to fun, to something memorable. Even a guy on the street, if you tell him, hey, look, here's a bit of sparklers, he will enjoy them. So it's not necessarily uh, burning money. It's what you're going to do with the mileage out of burning that money. That's what's important. My name is Paul Tricassi. I'm the uh, technical director of the Montreal International Firework Competition. We are among the best uh, place to do uh, firework. The Montrealers, the people of La Ronde, they expect to be impressed. One thing that's unique about Montreal is the audience sits extremely close, or they have the impression of sitting very close. And there's the lake, and there's the different firing positions, and so it's a very intimate theatrical experience. We are uh, Pyrodigit, we are an Italian uh, company that uh, produces a firing system. The company that uh, will make the show is called Pyro Emotion, also from Italy, and uh, we are to make a collaboration. We know that we will have a good show because we know they are doing their 150%. The fireworks invoke emotions that are outside of words almost because it appeals to such a basic instinct. Everyone's fascinated by stuff that's happening in the sky, bright lights and fire and explosions. It's the power of nature controlled in an artistic way. And when the display works really well and the music's working, it's just it's a really special feeling. Last year we made one collaboration with Pyromotion to participate in the Montreal Festival and we won. The timing is very important because a Pyromotion display is characterized by the timing of the single shot. Because the single shot gives the synchronization to the display. L'80% del materiale di produzione italiana, tutto il materiale viene prodotto all'interno della pirotecnica Padre Pio, la quale è il nostro partner ufficiale eh, per la produzione del materiale italiano. Buonasera, io sono Michele Presutto, titolare della pirotecnica Padre Pio, San Severo Foggia, Italia. Per lo spettacolo di Montreal abbiamo impiegato un mesetto di lavoro. A me è piaciuto tutto dei fuochi d'artificio. 
la creatività, i colori, gli effetti, c'è cioè tutto. Io vivo per i fuochi d'artificio. Passa fuochi. Passa fuoco. Passa fuoco. Passa fuoco. Passa il fuoco. Passa fuoco. Infatti ho mio figlio Umberto, sta seguendo le mie tracce e mi sta anche superando. In generale diciamo, la pirotecnica italiana è... si distingue dalle bombe cilindriche a uno, due, tre, quattro sfondi. Invece quelli italiani sono più lavorati e molto ingegnosi, molto diversi. Poi abbiamo la tradizione pugliese che è la batteria tipo mascletà spagnola, però sanseverese. C'è praticamente, sono delle batterie spolettate che passa il passafuoco e esplodono a terra. Invece la batteria nostra è diretta. My name is Dennis Fischer. I'm from uh, Holland. My name is Florine Fischer. I married a, a guy who was into fireworks. I'm here to witness Festa del Soccorso in uh, San Severo, Italy. Poi abbiamo la festa del nostro paese che è Maria Santissima del Soccorso. La festa del Soccorso è un'importantissima tradizione che accomuna tutta la cittadinanza sanseverese. Perché la tradizione di accendere questi fuochi per la Madonna? La Madonna viene da Palermo, fece una grazia a un palermitano e gli disse chiamami Madonna del Soccorso. I padri agostiniani portarono questa Madonna a San Severo e l'affetto è talmente tanto oggi come oggi che ai San Severesi tre cose non dovete toccare, la mamma, la Madonna e le batterie. There are no rules and you can come as close to the fireworks as you want. It's so, so loud. It even tickles your eardrums. If you're like me, a little bit crazy, you can get real close. full of crazy people in San Severo. Infatti un anno uh, avevano deciso le autorità di abolirla perché per loro pericolosa. Poche parole hanno bloccato la processione, hanno messo i santi a terra e la gente non si muoveva. Questa rivoluzione ha portato sì che le autorità hanno concesso poi di rifarla e così si va avanti, che è una festa bellissima. This is known as the island of saints and fireworks. In each kilometer you find the fireworks factory, so it's very difficult to find someone here who doesn't like fireworks. Every village in Malta has the feast. Because of the feast of the, of the patron, every village wanted fireworks, they wanted somewhere where to produce fireworks, where to manufacture fireworks. I always was interested in fireworks because I went with my father into the feast to see fireworks from when I was small. Yeah. You have five days for the feast but you should work the whole year.
for it. All this work, the musicians, the decoration group, the, fire, the pyrotechnicians, we are all volunteers. We have people who are farmers who work in the fields, to lawyers, doctors, everybody. It's not for money, it's not for glory, it's just for the self-satisfaction that we managed to do something quite dangerous and, and on a large scale. You don't, don't like the face, you love it, eh? There are a lot of farms, so you can hear all the elements. It's a peaceful place. It's heaven here, yeah? It's heaven. You see that over there? That cone made of steel? That is how we produce our charcoal. All the grapes are cut from the fields of Malta. It's one of the best charcoals. The smell of, of black powder. Uh, for some people say, what is, what is that smell? What is this? It's not nice, it's, it's shit. For us, it's like uh, an ice cream with decorations, with, with uh, everything on it, with some berries. That is the smell of black powder. Don't go to school to, to be a pyrotechnician. You have to use your mind, get information, see other people working around you. It's, uh, it's the passion. It's something which is inside. Either you have it or not. This my son-in-law. This one. This one, my child. It's a family tradition. Our father used to work fireworks, so it's something which we were born. We have very good original colors here. Yes, yes. I, I made them, I invented them myself. This is our father. <laughs> They don't make this type of furniture. In Malta, they are unique, very labor intensive. What we are doing, we are doing it from the heart to the saints. We are all of us Catholic here. This is the statue of Saint Mary that we have in Abba. And we pray when we came here in the morning and before we go. Accidents happen. But when you see why these things happen, and people died making fireworks. It is not because the people making fireworks are ignorant handling fireworks. Accidents happen, unfortunately. In 2010, they had an accident. You cannot stop. You cannot stop. Many, many people went away. If the, if if those, even my father went after away. After them, stopped. Everything stops, and we lose everything. The difference is there. It's, it's in the passion, it's in the spiking, how much you, you tension. That's all, all part of the trick to, to get the desired result, which a machine cannot do. And then there's the passion, which, <laughs> which a machine don't have. The final product is earned. You cannot buy it. Our culture is cylindrical shells. But we managed to make very good round shells. Round shells like the Japanese. It's getting part of our culture because many fireworks factories in Malta are introducing round shells now. This is actually a Kamuro shell. Uh, a 19 inch has around 100 of these. This is finished. Just put one igniter and... って名前じゃないですか。うちの会社が。だから 
入れてますだからまあ123456777色で一番外の中に6色6種類あるんで6重心ということで。3代目、まあ、友樹で4代目日本の花火の特徴というのは要するに丸く開かせると、まあ、始まりは神社に神様に奉納のそういう意味合いもありますしまた亡くなった人たちの魂を慰めると。すみまのみことの水の宮の勝つ替え祭りた雨の御影火の御影とかくりまして。自分の工場に作った花火を夏の花火大会に持って行って、まあ、打ち上げて、まあ、事故なく無事終わって、ね、また観客にも喜んでもらえるそれが我々にとっては花火を作る者にとっては一番の、まあ、喜び。Company in Malaysia、uh, called Red Flame. For this, this project, I'm working for Global 2000. We are in Da Nang right now, Vietnam. We're here to compete in the Da Nang International Fireworks Competition. This year is US, Melrose, and then we have Timid Lee, Parante, we have Russia, Fireworks Gun, and then we have Team Japan, Tamaya, Kitahara, and of course the whole team,、uh, Team Vietnam Da Nang. As a technical crew, we need to lay out every mortar tube for every company. We leave the hotel at 6 45 in the morning. We're on site by 7 o'clock. This is our fourth day on site. It's 90 plus degrees every day and、uh, very high humidity. It goes back to my grandfather. That was probably the spark that started it all. 
when I came into the industry, boy, it hit me hard. And uh, it's, it's, it's a passion. If you didn't have the passion, you wouldn't go through these hot days and, and do the long hours that we do to do what we do. I used to skip school when I was in kindergarten. My dad used to take me to the factory. I mean, so I've been, I've been around fireworks all of my life. I think every kid, you know, growing up goes to the 4th of July shows, awed by what they see. You know, it's every kid's fantasy. We have produced the International Fireworks Competition in Vietnam in conjunction with Vietnam's Liberation Day. I was in the draft to come over to Vietnam, and as it turned out, my number was high, so I didn't have to come. And then you come here now and you see it, and it's hard to believe 40 years ago that uh, the war was going on. We never forget the past, but we are ahead for the future. So uh, all of the U.S. people, friends for the Vietnamese people. And uh, I wish the Team U.S. to be successful. Of course, we would love to win, but it takes a lot of planning, a lot of work, and it takes a lot of luck. Ladies and gentlemen, Melrose Pyrotechnics presents Love for the Han River. The U.S. was awesome. It's a pretty big one for us. I think I had my picture taken more times than at my wedding tonight, so it was pretty amazing. People just kept coming up to us, shaking your hand, and they really appreciate us here, and it's, it's great to be here. I'm Jim Souza, and I'm uh, president of Pyro Spectaculars by Souza. My name is Ian Gilfillan. I'm executive vice president of Pyro Spectaculars. Our business is a family business, uh, third generation now. And our family came from Portugal and landed in the San Francisco Bay Area. One of the shows that I'm really proud of is doing the 75th anniversary of the Golden Gate Bridge. So we did a Silver Falls that went from one side to the other and then connected and then cascaded into the bay itself. We got in touch with Lusso in Portugal. They built the product for us specifically for that venue. This factory, you know, is 107 years. We are the fourth generation. The waterfall we sell to Paris Spectacles for Nice Sosa. The reason our family is involved in the firework business today is because of the religious and cultural ties to Portugal and the Portuguese festas. The Saint Barbara is our protector. The priest or someone with the cross come to the, the houses, they display rockets. The Portuguese name of rocket, Fuguete. The daylight rockets, it's something very special in Portugal. This, this one we, we name uh, machine gun. The other is revolution. We start with the smaller one. We put the banks inside. Do not forget, this is a shell made In the north of Portugal, when someone speaks in fireworks, everybody thinks in rocket, not in shell. The shell is something we start in Asia, Japan, also in Italy. But to display a shell, you must have tools. The most easy was the rocket, because they put fire in the hand and the rocket goes up. We 
It's culture. It's on uh, our blood. We are the crazy guys in the world. The one thing that every firework person in the world has in common is a passion for what we do because it's unique and it's powerful and it's so appealing across generations and across cultures. I know so many people all over the world. They love fireworks. They don't do fireworks to win money. They do it fireworks because they love fireworks. What gets me so excited and passionate about fireworks, you go on, I'm getting goosebumps right now just talking about it. The heart starts beating when you see that you created something. So you sat there with an idea, an idea to take emotion, whether it's a big loud noise or something very dramatic, and you see that pull off and hear the cheers from the crowd, that, that gets you going and that keeps my passion and, and the fire in my blood. Everything we'd love, and it's very, very, very important. This city is Santo Antonio do Monte, and this city is completely devoted to fireworks. My name is Natalia, I'm formed in Química. I work in the fire of fogos since my infancy. Por causa do meu pai, desde que nasci, que me lembro, né? É, sempre estivemos no meio de fargas de fogos. This is a chemical laboratory. My passion is research. É a paixão da vida dele é fogos. O assunto dele é só fogos, não há outros. Cylinder shells, round shells, all with this kind of, of mixes. A nossa família é, também aprendeu a gostar. É, por causa desse admirar isso. A minha mãe ajuda na produção e desenvolvimento. O meu irmão na qualidade de produção de bombas, Eduardo. É, William na administração, Owen, controle de estoque, Anabela, a Fanny, a Andrea e Paola na ajuda de novas ideias. Many young people, maybe they want to make firework or make a new research. That's my objective, to give to anybody, try to grow the, the art. Passa fogo. One bag with white powder. When I was throwing away, it catch fire and burn all, all my body. In fact, it was not the first time. I had three times burned all my body. But this was the worst. This último accidente, ele ficou com problemas na mão e com a parte da orelha queimada. Mas ele não quis fazer cirurgia plástica para sempre lembrar de que ele nunca mais errar, tentar evitar uma, uma explosão, deixar. It was almost impossible to sleep because the, the pain. I was thinking only a new formula, new composition, many new things I had to do. When I was outside the hospital, I went right to my laboratory again to continue school. No. For me, it's testing every night is not a work. In fact, for me, it's a pleasure to test the shells. <laughs> Nobody knows why. <laughs> it's inside of us. I think I, I born liking fireworks. Many people say it's, it's for the smoke. No, 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 no. It, it's something in the blue.
μεγαλύτερη δραστηριότητα που συμβαίνει στη Χίο κατά τη διάρκεια του Πάσχα βεβαίω είναι το έθιμο του Ρικετοπόλεμου. This rocket war, it's a tradition. It's a war between two churches, Saint Marcos and Panagia Erythiani, shooting with rockets to each other. Ε, από επιτουρκοκρατίας, γιατί η Χίωση πριν να επελευθερωθεί ήταν στα χέρια των Τούρκων, οι οποίοι οι Τούρκοι απαγόρεσαν το έθιμο αυτό το 1889, διότι τότε γινόταν με κανονάκια, με κανόνια, βάζοντας πέντρες βέβαια μέσα και όχι αληθινές μπάλες. It's illegal till the time of the night of Easter. Till that time it's illegal. At that time they can throw the rockets. Και έχει εξελιχθεί σε τέτοιο βαθμό με αυτό σχέδιο, με αυτό σχέδιο ρουκέτες. A friend of mine being killed when he was making this stuff. Traditions are not easy to to stop. They tried to stop it. They couldn't. Maria, get it, don't come in. Είναι το σημερινό θέμα που βλέπουμε με μεγάλες ποσότητες, κάτι που μας απασχολεί και μας όσον αφορά το ότι έχει ανέβει η επικίνδυνοτητα. Εδώ, εδώ κενό, 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 κενό. Sometimes they say that uh, they are more than 50,000, 60,000, many, many rockets. Και με αυτό το πράγμα θέλει ο Χριστιανό έτσι να εκφράσει μάλλον την χαρά του για την ανάσταση του Χριστού. Αυτό το ε, κάποιο τέτοιο συνδυασμό υπάρχει. Να βρει στόχο στο κουμπέ, στον τούρλο του Άγιου Μάρκου. Ε, όταν βρίσκεται ένα τέτοιο στόχο, οι φωνέ και οι κραυγέ είναι περισσότερε από τον κόσμο, με την τούκε, με φωνέ. Εκτο... Και εκτο... από τις δύο πλευρές, και από την Ερθιανή και από τον Άγιο Μάρκο. <Κι> Αλλά οι πιο πολλές πέφτουν στις εκκλησίες πάνω. This area is what the Thais call rocket country. I run a company down here and we call it Bangkok Pyro Holidays. It's a pyro school and we teach people how to build cylinder shells mostly. You can put two ball shells together, one on top of the other, I think they call it a, a peanut shell. So you have one burst and then the second burst. You can fill big ball shells with, with smaller ball shells, but that's sort of kind of the limit. The canister shell, there's a lot more variation in the construction and there's a lot more things you can do with a canister shell, things that you can't do with a ball shell. 
and I particularly like the way that you're using old-fashioned traditional techniques and I like the way that they're not made with plastic masking tape they're all made with paper string a little bit of glue sometimes it's a completely different experience anyone can load a firework and let it off but seeing it being made from scratch is just absolutely amazing participants they make all the black powder it make burst and lift they roll the casings themselves assemble all the fuses, they spike them, paste them. They, they make a complete shell themselves from scratch. They're still pretty tough in Australia. You can buy product, but you can't actually legally manufacture it. It's a good idea for the guys to be able to do it in a safe location where it's legal and appreciate the work that goes into making these products. We take a trip to one of these rocket festivals almost every weekend in April, May, June, where they launch these giant rockets. My office is in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Thailand has a serious fireworks culture. In fact, behind my office is the oldest temple in Chiang Mai called Wat Chedi Luang. And those monks go crazy with fireworks. They do it for religious purposes. They believe it brings rain. So they're inducing the angels above to drop rain. As they come and light it with two sticks, give it a quick spin and get out of the way. These are made with banana leaves. It's just a banana leaf wrapped up. They put the gunpowder inside the tissue paper, wrap it up in banana leaf, little tissue paper fuse, and an elastic band around them. Here in Thailand, kids, they play with fireworks because they have really big fireworks here. They bet like crazy, so they bet on the rockets. They'll bet on the beauty of the smoke trail. They'll bet on how straight it flies or how long they can see it actually firing. They also bet on whether or not it's gonna explode on the launch pad. And when they explode on the launch pads, they'll throw the rocket team into the mud. Some of these homemade rockets that they use in Thailand are tremendous. Some of them are, are so large. It's said that they can go up to 30,000 feet. <laughs> The thing I love about this is that it's a very social thing too. You, know, you work together, you ask each other's advice, you go out and have a, quite a few drinks of Long Thong, the local rum. The people are very friendly. I don't know what it is, just fire, I suppose. Fire and noise and some primeval instinct in, in people that attracts them towards the, the noise and the light. It's a an ageless thing. You can be four years old and be fascinated by them, and you get to 80 and you, you still have that fascination. It, it stays with you. My name's Tino Fodi from Fodi International Fireworks. Fortunato Fodi. My name's Robert Fodi. Vince Fodi. My name is Sam uh, Fodi. I'm the oldest of the Fodis. Fireworks has been in our family dated back to 1793, beginning in Italy. My grandfather and father moved to Australia and continued the family tradition here in Australia. I told my son, I don't want you to do fireworks. We were all encouraged to try something different career-wise, we weren't pushed into fireworks. He said, I want to do fireworks, and that's it. Then the other son wanted to do fireworks. Then the other son said, I want to do fireworks. I said, are you kidding? My granddaughter, she could do other work. 
No, she wants to do fireworks. The other granddaughter wants to do fireworks. I was always scared of fireworks as a kid, which is really ironic now since I'm letting them off. Love the smell, love watching them. Either it's a sickness in the family or I don't know. The significant advantages of being in a family firework business is that you're all working together towards a common goal. Today is New Year's Eve. We're going to have a massive fireworks display in Sydney Harbour to celebrate the new year. In terms of New Year's Eve shows, it's special, one, because of the location. You're in Sydney, so it's summer, so it's beautiful weather. You've got Sydney Harbour Bridge, and it's a display that's for the people. We've got 1.6 million people that come down to the foreshore just to watch the fireworks. About a billion people watching all over the world. In terms of global events watched, it's on par with uh, an Olympics opening ceremony. We're using Fire One software, and there's approximately 700 modules using every single piece of equipment that you've got available, and uh, you hope it works. The Fire One system was designed to be able to very uh, carefully and very precisely choreographed music and fireworks. We were contacted by Fody Fireworks about helping them to do the Sydney Harbour show on New Year's Eve, which is a, a very demanding show. There's actually seven barges spread across the whole harbour, across the Harbour Bridge, uh, plus the Sydney Opera House. Yeah, we're shooting some stuff off each of the sails. Fody recognised that this system could uniquely provide the remote locations they needed on the barges on the harbour and do the bridge at the same time. It's about 16,500 queues, there's 11,500 shells, 30,000, 40,000 uh, comets, uh, there's 14 kilometres of wire, there's 17 shipping containers of equipment. We go through nearly 3,000 espressos, otherwise the crew would just not work if you didn't supply them espressos. This is my first time in Sydney Harbour, which is pretty scary, especially because I'm a girl and my last name's Foti. It's a lot of pressure. You always get nervous. Always. I think if, it's, if you're not nervous and there's something not right, we put on a big front. The face looks OK, but inside the, start, the blood starts to boil a little bit. Now, get a little bit of a hiccups, you know, but it's OK. How do you feel it? Same. Same. <laughs> How do you feel it? The same. <laughs> well, that, that, that is good. You've got, uh, you cannot say, oh, no. Butterflies everywhere, but it's OK. Ultimately, all the work we do in our industry, in fireworks, is all about what the firework display is going to look like. So for me, the excitement is about seeing a display come off, seeing the fireworks come out how they should be, and seeing the audience reaction. is fireworks uh, appeals to anyone regardless of age, demographic, where they are. It really brings out the child within us. You know, we watch in awe, we get excited. I think that pyrotechnics has got a certain magic. Everyone loves the colour. Everyone loves the uh, noise. Everyone loves the effects. And it's beautiful. The who's who of fireworks around the world are family-based. There is a passion about things, a system of uh, work in a family of fireworks people. We need to produce something and we unite to do so. And it is a great, great feeling when everything fires or okay and we have a show produced that the world expects. To think that we are producing something they are enjoying, that's what makes it special. Luyang City is specialised in producing fibers for all over the world. Most of the fiber products are from here the world capital of fireworks. This is the world's capital of fireworks. 80% of this city was built because of the fireworks. And it's a bustling economy. You can look around and, and you see prosperity all over. And it's because fireworks are so popular around the world. They say about 90% come from China. Well, Liu Yang is very famous for the firecracker over uh, 1,400 years ago. 
So now Liu Yang is so famous for the consumer fireworks. This factory has been built for 32 years now. We export it to UK, and United States, Brazil, Japan, and Korea. 90, 95% is for export, for US market, for Japan, uh, for uh, Europe, and 10% is for domestic market. This is a family business. My father has been here, the fireworks business, for over 40 years. As a child, I think I just don't understand how it can go out to the sky and how it makes all different colors, especially the fire parts, the shooting parts, comes out boom. I like that part. What is the life of a firework? Wow, talk about the hands. You've got the truck driver that originally goes down to the chemical market to buy the chemical. You have the people that are rolling the paper, or even making the paper, to make the tubes, to make the inserts. You have all the people that are working in the factory to put the inserts together, to mix the chemicals, the technicians combining the chemicals to get the different effects, putting the clay in the inserts, wrapping the shells, putting them together, fusing them. Then you have the people that are going to design the label. What warnings need to be put on the box for the different types of fireworks. Before that, you've got all the people that are handling the firework, you put it into the case, put it into the warehouse. From the warehouse, you have the loaders, the people that load containers. From the boat, all the way across through the Panama Canal or Suez Canal, wherever it's going. Then later on, taking out samples, make sure that they're good, then put them on the showroom floor for sale. Then somebody drives up, goes, oh, I like this, I want it. They go to the cash register where your clerk is, fuse is lit, up it goes, it does its thing and everybody's happy. As a big factory, we get our employees together and ask them to see if they're happy here, see how can we improve their working conditions, their living conditions. We give you safe working conditions. The American Pyrotechnics Association was founded in 1948 for the sole purpose of providing safety in the design and use of all types of fireworks. We can't do many of the things that you see around the world. It doesn't make them bad or wrong. It's just not something that works in, in our society, and we're very, very conscious of protecting property and people. But what's really unique at least in the United States, is with this record growth of consumption, we've also seen a dramatic decline in the number of fireworks-related injuries. We're in this renaissance stage of the fireworks industry where the safety is dramatically improved. It's doing it the right way, having the right permits, using the proper materials, and having the background and knowledge to be able to use those materials safely and effectively. The APA was formulated to help regulate our industry in a thoughtful way, in a way that allows us to express ourselves through fireworks, but do so within the bounds of safety. The important thing that the APA brings to the table is that if there is an incident, they're the first ones communicating with the rest of the communities. You have a group of people here that care about the industry and care about moving it forward. I think the biggest challenge of working in the fireworks business is being able to respond to changing circumstances, whether it's in the regulatory atmosphere in the United States or the impact of regulatory changes in China. The regulations are getting tougher and tougher, but the fireworks industry is going to survive, and they're going to survive because they continue to improve. Keeping our industry safe is essential to our being able to continue doing what we do with fireworks. Doing business and having passion with fibers is different. People like Terry who have passion with fibers, they don't care much about making money from fibers. They just care about how fibers are developed. That little spark, that little seed that gets put in you that smell of the smoke that once you smell you're hooked and it never goes away. I started out as an amateur by getting involved in the Pyrotechnic Guild International, which is when I found out that people like me could actually do fireworks, could actually make fireworks. The PGI members are mostly hobbyists, and part of our mission 
of course, is safety and security of, of explosives and fireworks. But on the other side of that, we have to balance not putting too much scrutiny, too much regulation, too much oversight for law-abiding citizens. Fireworks are something for everybody to enjoy. And why should you limit just to the professionals when if you do it properly and do it right, you can do it safely? Why should an individual have that same opportunity to express themselves? And that's what the PGI is all about, competition among pyros. And it's not a display company. It's not this one technician. It's a group of people having fun together safely and showing what can actually be done with fireworks. PGI is a unique, I, I, I like to call it an eclectic group of hobbyists and individuals that have a real passion for the color, the smoke, the excitement, the danger. If you love fireworks, you can't have more fun than a week that you spend at the PGI convention. I really live for this week. I've often told my wife this is the only time in the year I can be around normal people for a week. Oh, that's fantastic. PGI! Yeah! All told, on the back line here, we got 82 10-inch shells and 32 8-inch shells. I think the audience will really appreciate the amount of big shells we brought out for the grand public display this year. My name is Peter Rogos. I'm a uh, show designer. Right now, we're putting together a display for the uh, national anthem for tonight's show. We're actually doing a really cool, very unique project, a live pyro musical to a live band, shooting a lot of stuff that's designed to function as proximate products, and also the original recorded music. I'm just looking forward to, to light them up. <laughs> you ready? There it is. We are the New York Rock, the NewYorkRock.com. Again, thank you to PGI. Thank you to all the volunteers. Torches Fireworks, RES Specialties, the Viverka Brothers, Pacifier. This is a very exciting moment, and I think this is going to be awesome with the fireworks. So enjoy. <laughs> It's not really a job, it's just a lifestyle. This magazine here is used for the all-stars. We're the old timers. Ooh. Here in America, we're losing our manufacturers. So it's important to have organizations such as PGI, where you can get together, continue the knowledge, share the knowledge for the future. There's this book called Fiesta Fireworks. And I love this picture of this little girl on the cover. When people ask me, why do you spend so much time on fireworks which only last for this very short time, I like to pull this book out and say, because it's the only way I know of that I can personally put that kind of expression on a little kid's face. It's a shame it's a dying art. You know, once the old timers die off, it, the knowledge is lost. It's really important to pass firework knowledge on because a lot of the older builders, they're getting out of the business. And if we don't have the new generations, we're going to lose everything for future generations. We need to step back from charging kids with felonies constantly and playing with innocuous things because they want to experiment. And we do need kids that understand these things. And so the education is very important. Push them together. 
when parents detect that their children want to make their own fireworks, a good outlet for that would be to find professional pyrotechnic organizations where they can get adult supervision and have fun without getting blown up or going to prison. The PGI, they have certain safety protocols and advice they can provide to individuals, certainly younger children that are, have an interest in fireworks. One of the tenets of the bylaws is to educate and transfer knowledge to the next group of people. I'm Nelson Pavlovsky, and I co-founded the Junior Pyrotechnics Association. The JPA is the group of kids who do our own show. This year, we're trying to choreograph it like a pyro musical. I was always tagging along with my dad, wanting to build fireworks, so I always learned everything from him, watching him, setting up with him. And I've just done everything. I've always been by his side when he does stuff, and I just love the smell of smoke. It's passing the firework knowledge from one generation to the next. I pronounce that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Sky is a medium just like canvas, just like clay, just like bronze or anything else. And these guys work real hard to paint the sky. We've been doing art together for a while as a group of friends. And uh, I always had this interest in fireworks. So then we uh, started incorporating fireworks into our art. Should we test one? I think we might want to test one. We're here at the uh, Western Pyrotechnic Association event called Winter Blast. WPA is a gathering of professionals and amateurs and people who just enjoy fireworks. Come out and get together once a year and exchange ideas. Western Pyrotechnic Association and the Pyrotechnics Guild International are more club events. Geared towards enthusiasts, they draw thousands of people. You don't have to work at a firework company, you just have to love fireworks. It's the passion for fireworks. It's the passion for getting together and being able to hold an event where you get to celebrate with fire. We got some crews building up some rocket ships. Okay. So it's gonna get spinning on the platform. Okay. And then when it hits this past fire, it's going to light all these and then it's okay. when the magic is going to happen. It is an artistic endeavor, it really is. It's, uh, it's a First Amendment freedom of expression. We're not sure how far they're going to go. We don't know where they're going to go, but they're going to go somewhere. To do fireworks, you have to be passionate about it. You, it, you can't do this job as just a job. If, 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 you, if you need employment and you just need to put money in your bank every month, this is the wrong job for you because the hours are long, the pay is not that good. You've got to love things that go bang. You've got to love the smell of black powder and the feel of it and the taste of it. And there's something about when shells are going off in boxes and bangs and you kind of feel it through your chest. It's just, it's the most amazing thing. That element of not sure what's gonna happen here, but I'm gonna light it and find out. That excitement, that passion, and that not knowing is pure joy for me. It's the excitement. If you go anywhere in the world and you tell people, oh, what do you do? You know, when you say fireworks, their eyes immediately dance, the smile jumps to their face. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you have an audience, and the audience is from very young to very old, different races, different religions, different creeds. And when the first big shell goes up and it's the whole audience just erupts. And it doesn't matter what language, because ooh and ah oh, is like a universal language. It's a prehistoric feeling of the people. All the people see a light in the dark. It is a fundamental right that I think everyone should have. They should all be able to celebrate with fireworks one way or another because it plays such an important part in not only our nation, but all the nations and continents across the world. I'm excited every day to, to get up and maybe see in a new type of shell or a new effect in the imagination that the people have. It's artistic, it's art, it's performance art, so 
We have to be the ones to stick our neck out and push it, push it a little more and convince people. Passionate about the culture of fireworks and the culture of the firework family businesses. For us, the most important thing is the family all together. We are like all one and we want to stand as one to promote the safety and preserve fireworks. I think together we help make the product and the industry safer. And I think that is what's going to help us to be here 100 years from now. And I would hate to see such a beautiful art form just fall away. Pass fire means passing the tradition, passing the trade, passing the art of the fire, the fire in fireworks. People just get it. You could have a group of people from 10 different countries that all speak different languages. And when you shoot a firework in the sky, there is no explanation needed as to why you should be enjoying what you're seeing. When you see a beautiful display, it draws on every emotion. It just, it touches me deep to my soul. And I think that a lot of people feel that way. Fireworks, just the love of fireworks. I don't know how to describe it. The greatest job in the world is getting to sell and shoot fireworks, you know? Yeah.